welcome to physics house today we are going to do something unique in our channel we have never done this before so today i'll be going through a mock page interview and it's a very new thing which we are trying and it's obvious that it will not be so good still you may watch it and you can learn something and you, you may enjoy it we have tried to make it little hilarious so you will enjoy it so let's begin send the next candidate good morning sir so mr nazin tell us about yourself my name is nazin and i am from kolkata i have done my bsc in 2014 in physics from geo institute and msc in 2016 from the same institute my research interest lies in solid state physics and electronics well you completed your msc in 2018 and now it's the end of 2019 So will you tell us what exactly you were doing in the last one year Uh so sir basically I completed my MSc in 2018 uh but during my MSc I just qualified LS net LS but I could not qualify net JRF so I had to take preparation for net uh, CSR to crack CSR Uh, net jrf because with net ls we cannot get fellowship in phd we know that okay so to arrange some fellowship i prepared for uh, csr net exam and during my preparation i was able to strengthen my weak uh, weak areas which i could not cover in my msc oh that's fine i take the marker so you told me that you are quite interested in doing research in solid state physics Then tell me how will you distinguish between metals, semiconductors, and insulators? So according to the band theory, electrons can possess some energy levels which are allowed to them, and they cannot possess some energy levels which are called forbidden energy levels. These uh, forbidden and allowed energy bands are arranged one after another. The topmost band is called the conduction band and the uh, lower most band is called the valence band now we can distinguish between metal semiconductor insulator in terms of this conduction band and valence band for metal the conduction band and the valence band are overlapped to each other so electrons can easily pass from valence band to conduction band for uh semiconductor there lies some small gap between the conduction band and valence band and this gap is called the forbidden gap or and in terms of energy it is written as energy band gap so for a standard semiconductor like silicon it has a value of 1.1 electron volt and in normal condition means at room temperature electrons cannot go from valence band to conduction band but at some higher temperature electrons can easily go from valence band and to conduction band and we get some current flow in the semiconductor and in case of uh, insulator the conduction band and valence bands are widely apart so in uh, normal insulator the like diamond the energy band gap is around 6 electron volt so when it is more than 4 electron volt it becomes in the category of the insulator and it requires a heavy amount of energy to pass a val electrons from the valence band to the conduction band so in norm in general we say that insulators cannot current any uh, cannot carry any current okay that's correct uh what do you understand by a direct band gap and an indirect band gap semiconductor can you explain it with uh, ek diagram so semiconductors uh, two types of semiconductors are there direct band gap semiconductor and indirect band gap semiconductor we can exp we can distinguish between them using ek diagram so for direct band gap semiconductor Hmm. 
for the direct band gap semiconductor uh, the valence band maxima and conduction band minima lies at uh, the same k at k equals to 0 and when an electron transition happens from the uh, valence band to conduction band and then photon is emitted and the energy of the photon is given by the band gap so a uh, photon of energy equal to the band gap of the semiconductor is emitted one such type of semiconductor is gallium arsenide so gallium arsenide is a direct band gap semiconductor so basically in direct band gap semiconductor electrons are gathered in the uh, minima point of the conduction band and uh, similarly holes are accumulated at the top of the valence band but in contrast for indirect for indirect band gap semiconductor the conduction band minima and the valence band maxima does not occur at the same k value still the difference between them gives us the energy band gap for in uh, for an india uh, for a direct band gap material when an electron transition occurs between the conduction band minima to the valence band maxima the conservation of momentum is hold automatically but in case of indirect band gap semiconductor to conserve the momentum uh, uh, a process must be accompanied in terms of uh, crystal uh, to conserve the crystal momentum uh, means the transition must include an interaction with the crystal to conserve the crystal momentum or conservation of momentum can be hold in that way so it will come in the form of heat then some electronic transition can occur and a uh, photon with energy equal to the band gap energy of the semiconductor may be emitted so silicon is uh, such a uh, indirect band gap semiconductor oh that's great what books did you read at your msc for solid state physics वैसे तो मैं पूरी बब्बर और एसो पिल्ले पढ़ा था बट यहां नहीं बोल सकते सर आई रीड एस्कॉप मर्मिन एंड किटल्स बुक वाओ इंप्रेसिव well i just want to ask you one question from classical mechanics you know newton's uh, second law of motion which could solve class 11 and 12 mechanics problems single handedly then suddenly you were introduced with lagrangian hamiltonian mechanics to describe the motion of a dynamic system was newton's second law not enough for describing the mechanics what are the advantages of lagrange and hamiltonian's method in Newtonian mechanics, we just use the uh, second law of motion of Newton. And in Newtonian mechanics, we need to we need to have the idea of all the f all the type of forces which are acting on the system. Each and every forces we should know about to find out the equation of motion or to determine the motion of the particle. But a complication occurs when the system includes some constraints then newtonian mechanics fails uh, newtonian mechanics create much more problems then in that in those cases we uh, need lagrangian and hamiltonian formulation so uh, in Lagla lagrangian and hamiltonian formulation we don't need to bother about the forces acting on the system we just need to find out the potential energy and the kinetic energy ek and uh, using these two things we find some lagrangian and using the lagrangian and solving the lagrange's equation of motion like this we can easily find out the equation of motion of a dynamical system and one interesting thing to uh, in between these two mechanics is that in newtonian mechanics we uh, we we use vectors like force acceleration etc etc but in case of lagrangian mechanics we just uh, need to deal with scalar fields like potential energy kinetic energy etc etc so it's basically very convenient 
for us to tackle more practical systems which comprises of uh, different kind of constants that's it sir yeah that's a good point oh let me check your graphing skills draw e to the power minus x versus x Do you know any physical process which shows this type of curve? Yes, yes, yes. It is a radioactive decay process. Yeah, that's correct. Draw for the negative values of x also on the third quadrant. I mean. Mm, negative x. Think little bit and then draw. You have drawn it wrong. Okay, okay. Yeah, now it's correct. So we are done. You can go now. Thank you, sir. So we have tried a very knuckly PhD mock interview. Hope you have enjoyed it a little bit. Uh, let me know in the comment section how much you have enjoyed. And if you want more such video uh, in future, comment down below. I will try uh, to upload more uh, in a very in in a better way. And uh, those who are new here. subscribe the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon